I personally believe that, that jazz has is, is got to be one of the most spiritual music that there is, you know, because it is spontaneous creativity. The history of jazz means a lot to me, especially being an African-American male. The music and the people in the music, a lot of them are African-American males who made success out of tragedy. Your ability to express how you feel um, and being in the moment and also trying to, you know, go into the unknown. I'm actually, I'm glad I'm here in LA at this time because it's a, 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 an amazing time. And uh, how it's going to evolve is something I'm looking forward to seeing. The jazz scene in LA has been evolving, especially of late. On any given night, you can catch a great gig at a number of clubs around the city. But although it's evolving, the jazz scene isn't new. It has a deep history. And the world stage in Lamert Park is a part of that history. It opened its doors 30 years ago, and it was founded by jazz drummer Billy Higgins and poet and community activist Kamal Daoud. And the phone call came from uh, Kamal Daoud, who I didn't know had my phone number. And he said that, yeah, Billy, Billy Higgins just gave me your phone number. He said, see if you're busy, come on down to this place on a deck. He and Billy were there, and uh, then Billy gave me a key. He said, uh, he said, yeah, he said, you think you can help out here? We don't know exactly what we're going to do, but we're going to do something here. We introduce things from an, from an, from an African-American perspective, and that's what the place is. But everybody, it doesn't matter what race, they all enjoy coming to this place called the World Stage. A thriving area this Lamert Park is, you know, so. Uh, we just, you know, need people to know that, you know, that this still is the mecca for African American art and music right here. There are musicians all across the country now. They got this start on this very little stage that we had the audacity to call the world stage. <laughs> kind of remind me of uh, the early jazz scene, uh, Central Avenue jazz scene. By way of working uh, um, at the world stage, you know, I met these great people like Horace Tapscott, Juno Lewis, Harold Land, and all of these people, and, and they let me play with them, you know? I mean, it really took the mystery out of it because, you know, you got all these guys that's on a high level that's doing all these wonderful, great things out in the world that you can sit just like how we sitting right now and they would share all of the information with you and 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 uh, uh, and let you get on the stage and play with them and and all of that and, and so it, it gave us the confidence we needed 30 minutes up the road the tradition of learning from jazz masters continues at UCLA's newly named Herbie Hancock Institute of Jazz yeah that's, that's, the whole idea. that's all it should be, right? Yeah, yeah, no, that's, that's the whole thing. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, that's really nice. This is a uh, two-year full scholarship master's program that accepts one group of six to eight students and during that time, they study with artists like Herbie Hancock, Wayne Shorter, Danilo Perez, Terry Lynn Carrington, Benny Golson, a long list of incredible artists. Uh, they teach in high school outreach programs, and they travel around the world performing and teaching. Let's put that, that break on one. At one time, the students may have shipped out to New York at the program's conclusion. But LA now offers new sustainable opportunities and communities for jazz musicians. Going back to this on top is like totally sad. The environment here is really progressive. I think the, the most um, inspiring thing about this area that I've come across so far is just the amount of interdisciplinary work. And I think that aspect of L.A. is really what helped propel jazz forward. I think Los Angeles is definitely having a moment. I always tell people uh, 
so I came out here in 2014, and then I believe the following year is when To Pimp a Butterfly came out. And I think I, I literally saw and, you, and definitely felt um, a shift, uh, at least to the attention that was being brought here. And I think it kind of just catapulted this whole energy and vibe in the whole scene. Kendrick Lamar's To Pimp a Butterfly captured audiences across all genres. And it highlighted a group of LA's finest musicians, many from a collective called the West Coast Get Down, a group of musicians who grew up together in LA and have taken the jazz world by storm. Members include Terrace Martin, Miles Mosley, Thundercat, and Ryan Porter, to name a few. But arguably, none have made the impact that Kamasi Washington has. And, we, and of course, we can't not mention Kamasi Washington, who in 2015 basically gave this large stamp on Los Angeles for a lot of people who, one, hadn't heard of him prior to the release of his album, even though him and his friends had been playing around town for years, and also gave this sort of national, international credibility of like, oh wow, people play jazz in Los Angeles, despite this rich history that's been in the music for decades and generations, really, going back to like Central Avenue. Washington played on To Pimp a Butterfly, an album that opened up new worlds of music to all types of listeners. In an interview with Pitchfork, Washington said it just didn't change the music, it changed the audience. My cousin is uh, 12 years old. He heard To Pimp a Butterfly and then after that he went and checked out. Um, he asked me about jazz musicians, I told him, uh, I told him, told him about Herbie Hancock, I told him about Freddie Hubbard, and told him about Elvin Jones. He went and listened to them. He listened to Manchild the next day. <laughs> he listened to Ray Clay. He was checking out all these records and like started getting into jazz. Wow. I, think, I think a lot of them, that was huge for me because I was like, I can relate to you now. We can actually talk about something. <laughs> <laughs> Flying Lotus is, and he's the one that turned me on to uh, Pimper Butterfly. Right on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he, I got a text from him and he's, he said, this is the Pimp a Butterfly, Kendrick Lamar. He said, it's, it's an important record. And so I thought, hmm, I better check it out. So I went and checked it out. And the record I'm working on has been influenced by that. Hmm. Not that it sounds like that, but it's been influenced by certain elements. As the UCLA program comes to a close, the modern L.A. scene brings a new meaning to working as a jazz musician. Once they're out in the world, I think everybody has to find their own path, because I don't think there's a, there's a cookie-cutter way to do it. Al Jarreau, uh, the vocalist, came to teach two classes ago, and I remember him saying, when you graduate, you'll join the think tank. And what he meant by that is, you'll join all of us who are trying to figure out how to develop this world that we've created. In order to have the new, you must preserve the old. And for Mr. Tribal, that means preserving the community and the history of the world stage. As we talk about all of the youth that's developing and the great things that's happening, you know, we cannot um, hold it up forever in terms of, of keeping the place going. And so it's just about time for, you know, I'm looking for somebody that's really got their mind and their spirit in the right place to come on in and, you know, let us pass the ball to them.